Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we are going to look at how to use the 3D maps at chart in Excel. Now for me I have Excel 2016 here with the Office 365 subscription and I can see my 3D map button about halfway along the insert tab. This feature will only be available for those using Excel 2013, where it is known as Power Map, or Excel 2016, where it is known as the 3D Map. So if you're using Excel 2013, you're first of all going to uh, have to look in Google to find it and download it as an add-in. 2016, it'll be available, but you may need to come into your options and your add-ins area to make sure that it is active or even to select your com add-ins and to ensure it's active and checked in here and then we're all good to go and we'll have this 3d map button ready for action on our insert tab allowing us to visualize our data over a map so what i've got on screen here is quite a big list of data and this is a sample data set that's provided by microsoft so that we can explore their features like the 3D map. So I encourage you to go there, grab a set of data and to play around with this tool like I'm going to do in this video. I'll pull a link so you can get to some of their different data sets, including this one I'm using right now in the description of this video. Okay, on with the action, it's quite a big data set. This is food inspection data. And you can see that we've got some uh, geographic information. I've got an address, I've got a zip code, I've got a city. And as I scroll to the right, we've also got information of interest, such as an inspection score and a violation type. And other stuff as well that I'm not necessarily going to focus on. Now this information is already in a table, but it doesn't necessarily need to be in a table for this to work. I'm going to click on my insert and then 3D map button. And this will use the power of Bing Maps. So you'll need to make sure you have an internet connection as you go to do this. And here we go, it's taken me into the 3D Maps feature. And straight away you can see it plotting some data on the edge of this map here. You can see a tours pane on the left hand side, a field list, just like a pivot table in the kind of top right corner here. And I've also got this layer pane on the far right, which is how we kind of build the map together, a little bit like the way you build a pivot table. Along the top, we've also got some buttons on a ribbon, just like you do in Excel. Now you can see on the right hand side that the first thing we need to do is specify what location data we want to use. And it's picking up different location data and kind of mapping it here um, from our data set. So it recognizes the word address, city, latitude, longitude, uh, zip code, and, and that's it. Now in this demonstration, I'm going to choose zip code. I want to plot my data using the zip code. And you can see the map area in the middle uh, reacting to that change. Now we've also got a option here for height, one for category, and also time data if you have one. So for height, for this field, I can either click on the little plus sign here and select a field, or I can drag it from this field list uh, pane that's provided. And for the height, I'm going for the inspection score. So let me drag that across. And you can see it create this legend over here. And then for category, I'm going to use that as well, clicking a little plus sign this time. That's going to be inspection type. Was it inspection type I wanted? What else do we have in here? Uh, violation type, that's what I was after, the blue and the red. But we've got quite a bit of data in this data set we can play around with. Now we've got some changes happening, but it's a little bit small at the moment for me to see what's going on. We've got buttons here to zoom in and out and also to navigate and to kind of twist the map. We've also got a really useful button at the top called Find Location. So if I click on Find Location, and if I type in Redmond, which is one of the locations, and I press enter, it's going to zoom into that area. 
I'm going to remove some of these fields that are kind of getting in the way at the moment. I'll close this find location. I'm going to close the field list button, uh, the field list pane, sorry, but there's a field list button at the top for me to return it if I wanted it. And I'm going to remove this legend as well, which I can do just by simply deleting it. There's also a legend button at the top also. And look at this, we can click and drag to scroll this map around and we're looking at how this data is visualized in the uh, Seattle area, I believe this is, on our screen. We've got that find location button so I can quickly jump to a location, but I can also just scroll around and zoom in and zoom out and view the data how I'd like to. Really, really interesting. Now, we also have a field or an the possibility to add a field to this time area. And we do have an inspection date option here. So we do have time data. So if I select that, it puts this little date time stamp at the top, which we can also turn on and off with a button up above, and also a timeline at the bottom, which we can also turn on or off with a button above. And we can click amongst that timeline, and it will show you what the status was for example, here on the 10th of October at 23 minutes past two in the morning, if I click over here, what it was like about midday on the 18th of June, two years later. So great that we can see our data at different points, different periods in time. We can even press the play button and play it as a video and watch uh, the kind of data unfold on screen. It's a really, really, uh, unique way really, quite a modern way of how we can view our data geographically. Now, what else do we have here? We have this tours pane on the left hand side. So we can export this data either as an image, which we can put into uh, a spreadsheet, we can put it into a presentation, an email, whatever we want. We can also export it as a video. So we've got this tour here, which is 10 seconds long. And it's just going to show the data a little bit like I've been demonstrating on screen. There's a button at the top for scene options. And if I click on scene options, I get the ability to give this scene a name because we can also create additional scenes. You can view your same data over several different maps and in several different ways and just name each scene appropriately depending on what you're looking at and why. I can also drag this little speed option so rather than seeing i'm not sure how many years this is but quite a lot of years of data in 10 seconds the way i've dragged it here reviewing it over 23 seconds so it's going to be a little bit slower i can also specify date and time period so you can see here it's actually was well, that seven years worth of data now if i just close down that scene options it's now 22 or 23 seconds long and if i was to play it you would see that a little bit slower than before as it moves through the dates and times when we see our data grow. Let me just pause that. I could then use the create video button in the top uh, left there on the ribbon just to export the data in that video format which I could easily uh, you know distribute via various means. So this is a quick look at this uh, 3D map tool and a demonstration here of how we can use it with some Seattle data and a very large list of data. Now if I just close down this 3D map and I'm going to switch to another file that I've got open at the moment just to show something a little bit uh, easier. Now a very, very tiny set of data that I'll just quickly put together and although you can use those huge data sets uh, provided by Microsoft about food inspection or or power, uh, sometimes that can be hard to relate to. So this is quite generic at the moment, but it's just a demonstration, first of all, that being someone who lives in the UK, uh, watching it work with uh, British postcodes rather than uh, US zip codes, and you can explore how you can use it with names of cities or addresses and just see how this stuff works. But also you can quickly create your own data and see something that might be more familiar to you, whatever it be, whether it be financial stuff, sales stuff, sports stuff, whatever works for you. Now if I just select this data, notice it's not in a table as well. I'll go to insert 3D map. You can see that I've got a tour already uh, provided here. One that I've done earlier and it just picks it up. I can either jump straight into that tour and view it or edit it. Or at the bottom here, I've got new tour. So let me click new tour. 
and here we go, opens up my map. But this time on the right hand side, it's not, doesn't seem to have recognized anything. Whereas before, you may remember in the location area, it was picking up uh, the latitude and the address and the zip code. So what I'll do is I'll click that little plus sign. It offers me the free fields. You can see my field list doing that too. And I'll tell it that postcode is the location data. That's the one. And then on the right hand side, I'll then map it to something that they understand. So I've called it postcode. They have called it postal code. For some reason, it's not automatically detected that on my data. But now I've told it, look, these two things, they're the same. This is information you should understand. Please plot it. And it does put those five values on my chart. And as I hover over, I can see information uh, pertaining to it. I can then choose something for height. So that's going to be the value. And then I don't have really anything else here of any relevance. I don't have any time related data, or anything to filter by or any categories. Let me get rid of this legend, which is serving me no purpose. I can start now to zoom this in. Remember the find location button can be used. There's also a button at the top for map labels. And if I press that, it will start labeling the different parts of the map. So that can get a little bit intense with all these words kind of everywhere. And if you know roughly the layout, you may not need them. And you can see oh, well, looks what's going on in the north compared to the south or the west compared to the east. And whatever it is you're trying to get uh, from this geographic view of your data. If I just zoom in a little bit more, maybe. And then what I want to do is look at the different chart types at the top. So previously we were just looking at a column, but we also have a bubble here, we have a heat map, we've got some other, well, we've got five different chart types you can uh, play around with. I'm going to choose bubble this time. Whoa, they are some huge bubbles. But the good news is at the bottom we have layer options. And if I expand those settings, we can start to play around with this. I can change the color. Maybe I don't want that blue. Maybe I want uh, some kind of yellowy color. Oh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, let's go for some kind of red color. And then the size of them, I'm going to massively decrease the size of them. That's a little bit ridiculous. You can also change the thickness of them. And we can view with the size of the button there being the size of those uh, generic values I was typing, whatever that may mean in real life. And we can see the two areas uh, that are you know, gradually outselling, let's say, the others. Once again, as I hover over them, it will actually give me the real value. You get these fantastic little tool tips that start to reveal additional information about your data. So we've got some good formatting options that you can play around with and do more. Uh, we've got some filters that we haven't explored as yet. Other thing that's important to mention before I finish this video, there is a refresh data button at the top. So if I was to switch back to my Excel sheet, and I'm just going to remove this annoying text box out of the way, and maybe delete it. And let's imagine this value uh, down the bottom here, this uh, Exeter area was to go to 200. And then I switch back to my power map and refresh data. And that will pull in the fresh data from that sheet. Look at how everything reacts. And so now the Exeter one is outselling the rest. So they've had to uh, react to that in addition to that bubble growing. So if this is something you're doing regularly, you can just hit refresh. You don't have to create your visualization all over again, you know, zooming it to the right area, doing your formatting. We can just refresh our data and pull in the updated information. And then at the top, we have this capture screen button. So if I wanted a screenshot of this in a PowerPoint presentation, I could just click capture screen and it just takes a kind of print screen, a copy of my map. And then I can switch to a PowerPoint presentation. I think I have PowerPoint open. Here we are. And I can simply just paste with control V or any other usual paste and dump that in to you know an email, a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet. And here we go. We've got that snapshot of that data, which I may uh, wish to present to, to shareholders in the boardroom or whatever the scenario might be. So this was the 3D Maps feature in Excel. It's one of the newer uh, charting and visualization tools available. Um, you have a similar one in Power BI. 
Uh, we've got a map feature there. I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. It's a slightly different name. It's not called a 3D map there, I don't believe. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel. And come check us out at computergaga.com.